What's the name of that river called again? Glenmuir? Glenmuir Water. Well, I need to start again then. Right. Okay. So that's us pitched up. We've arrived pretty late, it's about quarter to five in the evening, but we still got some sunlight. But it was a fantastic little stroll to a smashing little spot. We're up in the Ayrshire Hills this weekend in the little valley. It was a really stunning walk. You've got the moorlands, you've got some forestry, you've got all these little adjoining valleys, uh, mini valleys. We've passed um, quite a few derelict buildings as well. We actually went inside one and yeah, it's been through the wars as you'll see from the clips whilst I'm doing this little talk over. Um, we've had little mini waterfalls and just, yeah, dirt track all the way in. There was some minor ascents, but it's not a difficult walk by any stretch. Um, but that's us just finally getting set up we found this cracking little spot with flat ground to camp on and you have this little river and it's tranquil sounds as well today's weather this is pretty much it thankfully no rainfall on this trip absolutely delighted with that so what we're going to do is get the tap up to block the wind there is a bit of a wind sadly the wind can be quite gusty at times around 20 30 miles per hour but now that we're down in the valley we seem to be a bit sheltered which is good but this is tonight's setup i've got with me the nature hike cloud up too and as you can see it's a cracking little two-man tent ideal for you and your partner but if you're a tall person or you're just a you know just yourself like a lot of people you prefer a tent with room i would thoroughly recommend that this tent uh, give you an idea, you've got the mat on this side and the sleeping bag on that side so plenty of space for one person and it's got a nice little vestibule as well um, again because we're expecting dry weather this tent's just really for sleeping in I don't know if I would take it out in strong winds I don't, really, I don't think I'd really take any nature hike tent out in strong winds, even the cloud peak too I think um, 40 miles per hour is the nature hikes limit I don't know if you can see now that the tent's moving about getting blown about a little bit sadly the pegs aren't on the ground because the ground's a bit uneven but tonight's sleeping system I've got with me the Exped Downmat 5M our value in that's 3.8 should really take you down to temperatures around at minus 10 to minus 14 but we're not expecting those temperatures tonight we're expecting temperatures to get down to about Right about 3 or 2 celsius, the local towns further down are expecting 4 celsius but we are further inland and higher up so it can generally get a little bit colder up here and I've also brought with me on the safe side because even recently in the house I've been having some cold sleeps I've brought with me the OEX Leviathan uh, it's got a limit temperature of around I believe minus 17 I can't actually remember, I'll need to find the stats and put them up on the screen but again the temperatures only get down to around what do you call it two three maybe four celsius that should more than do the job along with the sleeping mat that i've got this evening and i've also got the trichology and flannel pillow from high gear finally decided to invest in a little filter the sawyer mini filter been told good things about it it's got a decent flow rate and what i really like about it is that you can bring a plastic bottle fill it with water and then just attach it like this there we go get that on 
And then uh, to give you an idea what the flow rate is like. Pretty good job. Ah, better than council pop. And this is my companion Scott set up. He's got the Berkhouse Cheviot, just like the Van Gogh Mirage. He's got a semi geodesic design, so ideal in strong winds. This bad boy weighs in at 3.2 kilograms, also like the Van Gogh Mirage. And it comes with a nice vestibule, which also comes with a little ground sheet, which the Van Gogh Mirage doesn't have. It's a roomy enough two person tent, certainly more roomy than the Nature Height Cloud Up 2 but not as roomy as the Van Gogh Mirage 2 but I really like it his sleeping system for this evening he's got the mountain equipment Aerostat down mat 5 is it? 7 7, down mat 7 and the R value on this is 5 5 so again with temperatures to get down to about just above freezing more than do the job I mean with an R value of 5 I think you're talking around about minus 22 25 as well just like the sleeping bag which he's got the Rabba Scent 1100 limit on this is minus 25 and the big man got it for an absolute bargain at 180 pounds was it? 186 186 pounds for a Rabba Scent 1100 that's normally going for around I've seen it at 380 I'm pretty certain so Tom's also going for a very warm sleep and he's also got a Tricology pillow and he says a cheap pillow from Amazon I believe The orange one is the cheap one The orange one's the cheap one You've got a lantern hanging point, you've got two vents, one at the front, one at the back and two pockets as well So we're both certainly aiming for a warm and comfortable sleep Ah well, all good things must come to an end a big gust of wind just ripped it from the very end right down to the middle so that's me ripped the Van Gogh Nevis, that's me then ripped the Nitchike Opalus 2 and now the DD Tarp. So three consecutive trips, three rips. <laughs> As the tarp has been ripped to shreds by the wind, we've decided to seek shelter in front of the tent, which I think we're clutching at straws a little bit, but we've got enough clothing for it to act as a windshield I mean I've got two down jackets and a jumper on but what we're going to do now is get the fire pit set up because I am not carrying that wood back out and we'll try and get a fire on the go <laughs> I really enjoy having fun with these Bigfoot Bushcraft fire plugs. You just twist them like that, bend it up and down, swallow it around, and then just tear it apart a little. Don't just completely rip it apart, but you know, distribute the threads that are becoming loose like that. Here's today's dinner, the vegetable hot pots, which is mashed tatty with vegetables and dessert sticky toffee pudding. So with the jet boil spork, it would collapse when you put your spork into whatever meal, like the vegetable hot pot for example, and then before you know it, you've washed your hand trying to dig out the rest of the remaining food using the little spoon that has collapsed. So I've invested in one of these bad boys. Enjoy my meals that a little bit more. I'll just let that sit in there while my dinner cooks. <laughs> I 
and it's 10 o'clock in the evening and it's bedtime the fire died out about 20 minutes ago I went for a little walk to keep warm and Tom went straight to bed but not really much happened during the experience what with the tarp getting ripped apart we just sat round the fire listened to some music Cabaret Nocturne a Belgian DJ son job John Hopkins and just chatted away shared some funny camping stories but at one point in the distance there was a lot of noise quite a thundery noise um, and you could also see the entire area just light up which is quite terrifying given the Ukrainian situation but have no fear the next night cloud up too would no doubt do a reasonable job in nuclear fallout uh, but John, sorry, Tom then realised that there's a, what do you call it, a military shooting base in the distance towards New Comnic, so that put us at ease. But yeah, the, the skies have cleared up, it was supposed to be cloudy all night, all evening, but there's stars everywhere, and temperatures were supposed to get down to around 4 Celsius with cloud cover towards Comnic, we're further inland and higher up, so you're you know, expecting to get a Celsius or two colder, but what with the clearer skies, I mean it could dip down to freezing, below freezing but I'm all set with my OE, OEX Leviathan it's got a limit temperature of minus 16, comfort minus 9 and my XPED Dymat 5M so I'm looking forward to my sleep tonight, just going to listen to some music there's no signal here, so I'm just going to listen to some ambient music Boards of Canada of course and hopefully that will put me to sleep It's half past six o'clock in the morning and I've been up since half past five. It is bitterly cold, it is very crisp. You can also feel it in the tent, but the wind chill is fairly below freezing. Now I'm not entirely sure about the air temperature. The air temperature feels below freezing as well, but it doesn't appear to be much frost. But it was a very interesting sleep. I fell asleep about what half past eleven. I had a great sleep till half past five, but I woke up very cold between half past 11 at night and half past 5 in the morning I was fine, I was warm when I went into my bag I was exceptionally warm but when I woke up whoa. so it's a little bit a little bit on the concerning side that I've been having cold sleeps in the house and out camping so I think in the future what I'm going to do is bring a hot water bottle but what I'm hoping to do next is catch the sunset it's a sunrise Monty get a bit of a time lapse and hopefully add that into the video but aye it's a lovely broad morning so far I think I called it a sunset in the previous clip but look at that for a sunrise it just happened to come up just near enough through that valley but I'm not a fan of sunrises at all However, that is a world-class sunset. It's a sunrise! That is the Lionel Messi of sunsets. What the fuck? But that's us just about packed up and ready to head home. Just about to have our warm meal and that's us. I'm going to ask Tom how his sleep went and it gives you an idea. The products that he's using, what the Rabasent 1100 and the mountain, what was it called, the mountain equipment? Aero start. So let's see how Tom got on. So temperatures get down to about zero Celsius. There's frost at the back of the tent. There was some frost scattered about, but the suns took it away. How did you find your sleep in the mountain Aero start down mat seven and the Rabbit Sent 1100? Uh, it was toasty. Uh, I was very happy with it. Very impressed with the mat, especially. It's just like the. It's pretty much like the, the X bed. Uh, I think that it's basically the same company that, that actually make it. It's just like a, a different brand of the same company. How much was it? It was 127, reduced from 200. I got the Exped for that value 3.8 for 70 pound in blacks. That's a bargain. I think oh it was right. reduced from like 90. Exped is cheaper than Fermares, but for a mat, for an R value 3.8 for 
70 pounds, can't complain. You've got one for an R value of five for 120 pounds. Yeah. And you got the Rab bag, a lot Rab I sent 1100 <laughs> for 186 pounds. It was very toasty. The, the only thing I can be disappointed in is the, the amount of condensation in the Cheviot. That was a disappointing thing. I didn't know the Chevy was known for condensation because you said it had two vents. It does, it may have been just my fault that I didn't get open the vents enough mm -hmm. on it, but when I actually checked this morning, there was basically condensation along the inner. That's the third time I've had the cloud up to by nature hike out. Zero condensation issues. It's a cold tent, I'm sure it was warmer in there though because it's a, it's a double layered inner. But then. Um, oh, it was, that was toasty. So I'm surprised there's condensation, it's a double layer down there as well. I know. Oh well, thank you very much. So man in the match goes to the X-Bed down Mat Light 5M. Although I did have a cold sleep around the five, six hour mark. The sleeping bag wasn't doing the job, but, but the mat certainly was. There was a lot of heat still trapped in this mat and this made my life a whole lot easier. I can only imagine what it'd been like if this mat had failed on me. It'd probably been a much colder sleep earlier on. But the other thing about this mat as well, what with the vertical slats, the vertical design, it is super comfortable. So again, this is a mat that I highly recommend. Really any mat that's got that vertical design, anything by Xped uh, and I believe Mountain Equipment also has that vertical design as well. So it's an outstanding piece of kit and I would hugely recommend it. Really digging the Sawyer Mini as well. It's got a decent flow rate. You can also attach it to a bottle and it's ideal when you're camping next to a little river. If you haven't got a filtration system, then I would heavily recommend getting one you're going to save a lot of weight so that's us signing out now another cold sleep i don't think it was the bag's fault i think i'm having issues regulating my body temperature but um, a big shout out to james montgomery man of the match performance on friday night's live stream well done mate and a big shout out to mia as well but if you guys enjoyed the content i'd appreciate it if you smashed the like button dropped a comment and also hit the subscribe button help me get to 10,000. i would mashly mashly massively appreciate it still don't have that tooth so take care y'all and i'll see you in the next adventure